Coach, you're three days into practice, uh, season opener two weeks from today. Just talk about you know the excitement level that you've seen in practice so far. Uh, the, the team is very uh, excited about, about what's going on. They're very excited, I think, to get to the first match. I, uh, I don't think anyone really likes practicing <clears throat> as much as they like competing. So they're very excited about getting to Michigan State, getting on the floor. Uh, we had kind of a slow start the first couple of days, but uh, they're, even though they're getting tired, the energy level has actually been uh, picking up, and that's exciting to see that as they get tired, they're actually putting a little more focus into staying, uh, keeping the energy level high. I know that you've talked about really having a, a, a grueling fall camp to get them ready for the season. Um, can you just talk about that philosophy a little bit? Yeah. Well, we're, we're not trying to kill them. We just, uh, there's, there's such a short amount of time available between the time they report to the first match that uh, just the multiple sessions a day and, and there's not a lot of recovery time it's just very hard on the body even even though we're not trying to make them tired and we're not trying to, to you know punish them if they came in out of shape uh, it's just a lot of repetition that we're trying to get in before we get started and so it does it becomes very grueling and, and we we push it as much as we can uh, because of the limited time just talking about you being the guy with the whistle again and telling people when to stop and start you know being a head coach again how that's been an adjustment for you? Uh, <clears throat> in some ways, it's very exciting because uh, I think always as an assistant, you always think you have a better way to do things. Um, you know, you're always sitting on the sideline going, oh, what, what? I wouldn't stop it here. I'd do this. Uh, so that part's exciting. Um, but there are a lot of things that come with being a head coach. Uh, there, there's advantages to both. There's some parts of being an assistant that, that I miss. Um, as the head coach, obviously, the, the, the buck stops at, at my desk. And there, there are a lot of decisions that have to be made. And, and sometimes those can become... Uh, a little overwhelming. That's the part of the job I, I probably didn't miss, but I, I do like being back uh, in the gym and being kind of in control of the team um, and getting to put my philosophy uh, into everything we do, practice, game uh, plans, and all those things. So it's kind of exciting. In your previous stops, you've had experience with building programs, rebuilding, and making them better. Um, can you just talk about um, what qualities teams need to possess to have that kind of success and if you've noticed some of those things here already? Well, I, I think there's some things that every team has to have. One, if you want to be good, you have to work hard. Um, I, I, being, a, being a high caliber team, they don't get there by accident. Um, they're, they're working hard, they're in the gym, they're always focused. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, I don't want to say surprises, but it was a surprise when I came here based on their history, uh, was how hard this team works this team works extremely hard and that's one of the things that um, leads me to believe that with the players we have we can have success because they do work hard um, so I also think you have to have a certain uh, amount of physical ability and physical talent and I, I think this team's a lot more athletic and physical than I expected too we have a lot of very athletic and physical kids so those two things together uh, give me a lot of hope uh, towards this season, not, hey, we want to build something for five years down the road. I think we can turn it around um, a little quicker than I expected because of that. Because uh, uh, the work ethic uh, was just a very pleasant surprise walking the gym, how hard these kids work, and they continue to work hard. Like I said, I thought we got off to a slow start uh, with the preseason, and they've actually picked it up as they've gotten tired, and I just think that's a great... Uh, thing to see. They they want to be good and they're willing to, to work for it. Um, the past few years, last year especially, um, offense ran through Missy. Um, you talked about moving her to the right side. Um, just talk about maybe some of her strengths and the decision to move her over to the right side. Well, Missy, uh, I think Missy could hit anywhere on the net for us. Uh, I, I think she did a great job. I'm sure she did a great job for them in the left front. Last spring when she was in left front, she did a nice job. Uh, we've even in practice had her attack out of the middle. She does a great job. Uh, but uh, she seems to be the, uh, the most comfortable on the right side, and I feel like we can do more with her without really moving her around a lot. Um, she's very capable of running uh, uh, a lot of different tempo sets, and it's much easier to do that with her on the right side uh, than on the left side. Uh, the, the downside is you put her on the right side, we just have to have better ball control so we can get her the ball. Um, so the, the decision to move her over there was, uh, one, because I, I think she's the best right side attacker we have, um, two, I think it'll allow us to do more with her, move her around a little more, because uh, 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 judging from spring, people do expect us to give her the ball a lot, and I feel like by putting her over there, we can move her around and maybe uh, give her some some opportunities to to not always hit against the double block, and I think she puts up a good block, 
Uh, so to pit her against the other team's big left sides, I know there's some teams in our conference with some, some pretty physical left sides, and I think she can do a good job uh, trying to limit what they can do against us, with uh, uh, not only with her physical abilities, but just her competitiveness. You mentioned passing um, a little bit as a concern. I think you had that concern in the spring even a little bit. Just talk about... Um, you know the 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 need to have you know the good passes and maybe some things that, that you've seen that they've done better since the spring. What they need to continue to do better? Yeah, Pat, we just really think ball control has to come up all together. Uh, well, it's one of the first things when we first got here and we looked at that we thought was uh, one of the things that if we could improve would show uh, an immediate impact on the team. Um, uh, points are one at the net, so most of them come from hitting. Uh, but for that to happen, you have to be able to to, to deliver a, a ball out of serve receive where the setter has lots of options all the time. And, and that's another thing about trying to get someone like Missy some more one-on-one -on -one opportunities to get more people involved in the offense. Uh, we saw an improvement last spring, um, and, and as we get into preseason, that's still a major focus of ours. Um, almost everything we've done in the gym till now has been ball control and passing uh, to, to, to try to help make the offense better off the first swing service. We really don't want to rally with people. We'd like to get a kill off the first swing, and, and that's going to come down to passing um, uh, on, a, on a consistent basis, a really good first ball. I know you talked about um, moving some people around, uh, especially the newcomers, just to see you know where their niche is, especially in the middle, uh, just because there's six of them. Just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we have a lot of depth in the middle, uh, not as much depth at the pens. Um, <clears throat> so with, with our middles, we are trying them at different positions uh, to see if we can get a little more depth at some other spots and find the best place for everybody. Uh, just because they played middle in high school doesn't mean that that might be where they've shown. I know Missy played middle in high school, and she's an outstanding pin hitter. Um, so we are going to give all, all the newcomers a chance to play all three front rows positions. Uh, some of the returners we kind of kind of have in our mind uh, where we'd like to have them play. Uh, but most of the middles will have to train in two positions uh, this fall um, to give us some depth outside in case someone gets hurt or in case someone's not having a, a good day. Because uh, right now our, our depth at right side and left side is just not deep enough. Uh, and, and rather than waste those six middles sitting on the bench waiting for the, the, the ones in front of them to get hurt, uh, this gives us an opportunity to use their physical abilities. Uh, uh, two weeks left. Just talk about maybe the biggest area that you want to see an improvement on in the next two weeks. Well, it, it will be ball control. Um, <clears throat> we really have hardly got, even gotten into the offense. And, and I know a lot of people just want to hit, hit, hit. Uh, but until we feel like our, our passing is very solid and our ball control, the, the, the first touch on the ball is, is strong, we really won't move on. Uh, we, we, it's not so much we have to be uh, game ready against uh, the teams we face at Michigan State, against Eastern Kentucky, Michigan State, McNeese. We have to be game ready when we get to our first conference weekend because it's more about the conference. So if our offense isn't quite going those first couple of weekends, uh, I'll be okay with that as long as we're making the strides in the ball control, and, and then by the time we get to conference, we're where we want to be.